Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready? Let's make our demand because I'm expecting a miracle today. What about you? Praise God. Are you expecting a miracle? All right, let's go. Say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And you shall have it. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, now, you know, we, we've been looking at our, the purpose, the hope, and the manifestation of our calling. Father, we thank you. Because today, you will open our eyes more and more. Miracles are taking place even in our hope. Thank you, Spirit of God. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, turn your Bibles. Well, let, let's, let's, let's read first Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Now, we've been on this since Monday. And because there's so much in here. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. There is the hope that is energized by the Holy Spirit. That's the hope he's talking about. See, it's the hope he's talking about. Now, specifically, now let's go back to Titus. We read this before. Titus, thank you, Jesus. Chapter 1, Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. Now he says, in hope, let me start from verse 1, Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul is servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Now look at verse 2, in hope of eternal life. Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now, this is the specific hope we are dwelling on. And, and this is the ultimate hope that God has called us. This is the ultimate reason God has called us to believe in Him. What is it? It says, in hope. Thank you, Holy Jesus. In hope of eternal life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hmm. You know, sometimes the Spirit of God just takes you into another realm. But then you remember, look, I'm talking to people, so I've got to contain myself. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you realize what eternal life is? We haven't talked enough about it. The church hasn't dwelt on this. Listen, we are not people that God have called to just live life and end like every other person. And our own testimony, ah, God helped me. He called us to receive eternal life. Do you know that? Do you know what that is? Do you know what that means? Do you understand? I'll tell you something. You know, one day I was fellowshipping with the Lord and then the Lord said this to me. He said, hey son, you must go beyond what others have gone. You must go deeper. And then he said something that shocked me the most. He said, son, listen. Even the disciples that walked with Jesus didn't fully understand what he was talking about. I said, wow. You know, that's why I always say this. Limiting ourselves to the Bible can be of great disadvantage. I said limiting, stopping where the Bible stopped. The reason is this, first and foremost, 
The Bible doesn't even capture everyone's faith. What do I mean by that? At best, Matthew, John, these were the only two disciples that wrote their epistle who, who saw Jesus alive, Matthew and John. Luke didn't see Jesus alive. Um, Mark didn't walk with Jesus. He wasn't a disciple of Jesus. These were Mark and Luke were people who believed many, many years after. Many, many years after. Actually, the Bible says Paul's conversion happened about AD, um, AD 30 or between AD 30 and AD 33. <laughs> Do you know what that means? It means after 33 years of Jesus' resurrection and ascension was when Paul believed the gospel. Do you know what that means? It means the disciples of Jesus who walked with Peter were already about 30, 33 years in the faith, not days, not weeks, 33 years in the faith before Paul believed. Now think about this. Think about this. After 33 years or thereabouts of demonstrating the truth, Jesus had gone by this time. So they've been seeing miracles. Peter and the rest of them, they've been seeing miracles. They've been doing all stuff. You know, just think about it. After 33 years, God picks a man by the name of Saul, changed his name to Paul, anointed him with the Holy Spirit. And then he began to speak and share things that even Peter had to write about. He says, some of the things he's sharing, they are too hard to be understood. Now, this man didn't walk with Jesus. This man didn't see Jesus alive. Probably he was a child. I want you to understand it. And now he, he comes 33 and something years after. Now think, now he, he got converted about that time. And, and think of how, how many years you know, he spent with the Lord and understood what God wanted him to do. And then he came out and began to share with the disciples and the other apostles. And, and he began to bring a new dimension to the gospel. And guess what? They didn't ask him, who are you? Who do you think you are? Where did you come from? Now, the funny thing about this is, even Apostle Paul didn't fully obey the Lord Jesus Christ. It will interest you to know this. Now, most of the epistles we read, and you see, so I was trying to say something, and I'll come back to this right now, but let me explain something to you. Now, I'll say the gospel was written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, out of the four, two of them, Matthew and John, saw Jesus. Now, Mark and Luke did not see Jesus, right? And then, after the gospel, then Luke went on to write the book of Acts. Now, what's the book of Acts? He was trying to write about the things he heard about the apostles and some of them he experienced while working with Paul because Luke was actually a disciple of Paul, the apostle. He was his son. He, Paul got Luke born again. You understand what I'm saying? So Luke followed Paul most of his journeys. So the other things he wrote about the other disciples in the book of Acts were things he heard. Now, he didn't capture the works of every disciple of Jesus Christ or every apostle. He didn't capture it. Why? Because he had his focus. Are you getting what I'm saying? He had his focus. And then we go into the epistles. Now, the epistles are now narrowed to the writings of Paul. Now, we didn't see so much writing of Peter, apart from 1st and 2nd Peter. We didn't see so much writing of John, apart from the book of John. Well, you say John. What about Bartholomew? What about um, Andrew? What about, um, what are their names now? All the other disciples, John and um, um, Judas, not Judas Iscariot. Now, I know there was another Judas. What about the other disciples of Jesus Christ? Didn't they write anything? What about, not beyond their writing, what, did they go to sleep after Jesus left? What about the works they did? We don't have those things written down. 
And then we find someone else that, that held Paul's hand and brought him to... You know, some preachers think that after Barnabas and Saul separated, Barnabas just disappeared, you know. He didn't disappear. No, he didn't disappear. The, the, the people who compiled the Bible just followed through with Paul. It doesn't mean Barnabas stopped preaching the gospel. It doesn't mean Barnabas stopped walking with God. It doesn't mean God took his anointing away from Barnabas. No, he didn't. Barnabas was a great teacher of the gospel. He was a great teacher, I'm telling you the truth. You remember the disciples had to pick him and say, look, we want you to go and follow up the brethren. Why? They said because he was a good man and he was full of the Holy Ghost. Now, they notice that character about him. Number one, he's a good man. So he's not going to take advantage of the brethren. Praise God. Now, he's the one that took, he's the one that recognized the anointing upon Paul's life and said, come, I'll take you to the disciples in Jerusalem. He began to lead them to them. But hey, do you realize that most of the epistles we read about, written by Paul, they were written in his disobedience to the Lord. Say so disobedience. Paul disobeyed God. Yes, Paul disobeyed the Lord. I'm trying to say something to you now. That, that's why the Lord was telling me, you need to ascend. You need to rise above. Don't, don't set any limits. Paul went to Jerusalem. In two instances, God told him not to go. God told him, these people will not receive your testimony concerning me. And then I was, God said, look, no, 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 leave this place. I'm sending you far to the Gentiles. See, so Paul was preaching among the Gentiles. And then one day he said, look, I must go to Jerusalem. On his way, the Spirit of God kept telling him, this is not the right way to go. The disciples prayed. No, he saw the disciples and they just praying and having felt, God began to speak to them. This guy is in disobedience. Tell him not to go to Jerusalem. And then they began to tell him, say, Brother Paul, look, this journey, when all believers, all the brethren were saying the same thing, don't go to this Jerusalem. He said, look, you guys, I'm not, I'm not listening to you. Even if I die, I want to go to Jerusalem. Agabus came and said, hey, this is exactly what's going to happen to the owner of this stuff. Tied his hand and leg. Paul said, hey, I'm, I'm still going. He was, he was, he went to Jerusalem out of disobedience. Now that's the reason, have you ever wondered why? Paul and Silas were locked up in prison. They prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. They were delivered. The disciples, they will lock them up. One time Paul and, Paul and Barnabas were stoned and they thought they were dead. But by the power of the Holy Ghost, they came back to life and they continued preaching. But Paul got into Jerusalem. He was arrested. He was locked up. Not one supernatural intervention. And he spent many years in jail. That was not the will of God for his life. He was in disobedience. You know what exactly happened? He got into Jerusalem because there was no word. God never spoke any word for him in Jerusalem. Not a single angel could help him in Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem, he was a stranger to all the angels. The only time you see God begin to deal with him again was when they carried him as a prisoner out of Jerusalem and they were sailing to Rome and then they had that ship experience and they said an angel stood by me before then he couldn't say that so so all these letters you see written by Paul they were written from prison and then he was in the reason was the reason he was in jail was because he was in disobedience to the Lord what am I saying to you you don't use this man to set the final standard for your life. You read all these things and you find out, even including Paul, now you learn something from Paul where God have not commanded you to go no matter your desire for that place. Sometimes we have this burning desire for our family members. But if God have not commanded you to go there, sorry, son, stay where God have commanded you to go. As long as you are obeying the Lord, He, they, he understands your concern. He will send help to that your concern. Isn't what Jesus says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And those things that are your concern will be added to you. So it's also written for our learning, praise God. So we must ascend 
to see Jesus beyond every man. We must ascend to see Jesus. Oh, we like their writing. We bless what they've done. But we must go beyond to see Jesus for who he really is. Brothers and sisters, that is eternal life. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.